Let us take the discussion further on Rakesh Mohan and Parthare's article on Indian financial structure. We have already talked about within capital markets, debt or bond market. Now let's discuss equity market. So they say this, that reforms, they have started in a market in 1992. And most of these reforms, they aimed at uh, creating the growth enabling institutions. And within that, major one were SEBI, Securities and Exchange Board of India, and National Stock Exchange, NSE. SEBI was set up in uh, 1988, although it was given its statutory powers uh, in 1992 through SEBI Act of 1992. And one of the main feature of the establishment of SEBI was that you have to protect the interest of uh, investors, right? And you have to promote the development of the security market. And at the same time, you have to regulate the securities market. So the regulation was put in place. So this is putting in place of the regulatory framework. So this point is helping, SEBI was helping in, uh, in, in achieving the objective one and this, this objective, putting in place the regulatory framework, one thing. The another growth enabling institution was National Stock Exchange. It was established in uh, 1992. And uh, it was, I mean, it, this, this was the modern electronic trading plate, platform. Right, and uh, this helped in the introduction of the derivatives training, uh, derivatives trading in India. Mm. Uh, derivatives such as uh, futures, options, etc. Those, uh, those were uh, also started trading on national stock exchange for the first time in India. Mm. Uh, and the other objectives for the equity market were that they want to create the competitive conditions in the equity market. And it should be held, one, one should aim at reducing the transaction costs. There were huge transaction costs which were, uh, which were there earlier before the regulations were put in place. So they were aimed at to reduce the transaction cost. Other, there was a lot of uh, information asymmetry earlier. Now they want to reduce the information asymmetry. So prices were shown, right? And people can understand that which uh, stock they want to buy and which stock they want to sell. So it is going to reduce the information asymmetry. This was an objective of the reforms in equity market. Well, there has been, there is a lot of improvement in, uh, in equity market. Uh, and you can see it from the point of view of the size of the market. It has gone up. Liquidity has gone up. Transparency, stability has gone up. Hmm. Right. So, I mean, stability is no stock exchange can always be always stable. There, there has to be some volatility, definitely. Uh, but it should not, there, there should not be swings which are very high and very low. So that is what we call it as, as, as stability, but there is some volatility, definitely. But still, uh, uh, India's market capitalization to GDP ratio. So this you can give as an evidence that uh, this, uh, this is standing at nearly 70%. India's market capitalization. To GDP ratio is standing at uh, 70%. And this is in 2016. And the other thing is that at the end of 2016, or sorry, at the end of 2015, authors say, 
the share of um, um, Indian market capitalization in the global market capitalization is very small, around 2.3%. So these were the developments in equity. The another part of the capital market, apart from the equity market, is the mutual funds. Now, people can invest in mutual funds or they can also invest uh, separately in just the profit of one company. That is what share is. In mutual funds, there are people who have created a portfolio and then you invest in that portfolio. So you diversify your risk. Uh, in from 1968 to 88, UTI almost had a monopoly in the mutual fund market. And after 1990, 1988, some non-UTI mutual funds, they also started. Mainly the public sector banks, LIC, general insurance companies, those have also started the mutual funds and people could also invest there. After 1993, private sector started coming in the mutual funds. And this was the turning point when uh, the Mutual Fund Regulation Act was passed in 1996. Uh, it gave more operational freedom to the mutual funds player. If you look at the growth and if you look at the, uh, the current scenario, as of March 2016, there were 44 asset management companies, basically mutual fund companies. And in terms of mutual funds, the share of the private sector mutual funds is more than the share of the public sector mutual funds. People can invest in mutual funds which are more equity oriented or they can invest in mutual funds which are more debt oriented. So it is not that the mutual funds will be only the collection of, uh, in, in your mutual funds portfolio, you will have only the collection of the equities. You can have the collection plus debt or more debt or only debt or whatsoever. So recently what the authors say that they have seen that the preference is more towards the debt oriented mutual funds. Uh, I mean, vis-a-vis, uh, equity oriented mutual funds and they say that the share of the retail investors share of the retail investors in uh, in asset center management is around 48.5 percent while the 51.5 percent is coming from the institutional investors, right? So they say this that uh, the assets under management in the mutual funds industry, if you look at some, some non-metro towns and cities, then also you see this is a testimony to the fact that yes, mutual fund industry can also grow even further. So there is a huge scope for this. The India does not have a universal social security system. In many developing countries also we didn't have this in india also we don't have so mainly the pension system or the social security system is mainly for the organized sector of the labor force both public and private in public sector you have uh, uh, the social security which is coming in three layers provident fund gratuity and pension scheme so gratuity you will be getting the at the time of the retirement and then you will be getting the pension scheme also. In, in private sector, you mainly have the provident fund. There were reforms as in, uh, there was the new pension scheme, which was uh, introduced in 2004. And uh, as of March, 2016, as of March, 2016, there were 8.7 million subscribers. Eight point seven million subscribers, and uh, under the present scheme, a subscriber can actually find out that which pension fund he wants to invest in. Uh, uh, he can select uh, any one of the eight pension funds. So there are eight pension funds out of which he can select one. Eight pension funds, uh, and if you look at uh, the amount of the old age population in India, that is also, I mean, since our population is already huge, old age population is also huge. There are these old age people, these old people, they are investing in pension funds. So these pension funds resources would also be available 
for investment in the infrastructure project. So there is a huge scope for the pension funds also. So these are the four segments of the capital market. These are the four segments of the capital market of pension funds, mutual funds, equity market, and the bond in the debt market. So we have seen the capital market and we have also seen the insurance sector. Now let us talk about the last two segments of the financial markets. One is the external account and the another one is non-banking financial corporations. So as far as external account is concerned, uh, then from 1992 on, uh, there had been the greater flexibility in uh, which has been given to the foreign players also. Procedures were simplified. New instruments are available. And uh, as far as your uh, infrastructure is concerned, that is also developed to undertake these financial transactions. Uh, and uh, the turnover in the forex market that has also experienced a lot of a lot of increase. Then what we say is that uh, since 1992, the foreign portfolio investors in general and foreign institutional investors in particular, they can invest in both the equity market as well as in the debt debt instruments. Uh, so foreign portfolio investors would include such as pension funds, mutual funds, asset and companies, etc. So, and not only that, the Indian corporates were also allowed to access the international capital market. For example, through American depository receipts, global depository receipts, uh, foreign currency convertible bonds, etc. All of these. As far as FDI is concerned. Uh, mostly FDI is allowed in most of the sector except uh, uh, print media and real estate. Uh, and then interestingly, the non-banking financial uh, finance companies. They're different from <clears throat> the banking uh, sector. Right? One thing is that uh, they cannot accept demand deposits right? Uh, as the banks can. And uh, they also do not form, form the part of the payment of the settlement system, right? So it means that they cannot issue checks which are drawn on itself. And the deposit insurance facility is also not available in the NBFCs to depositors, unlike that. So, and there are different kinds of NBFCs. So for example, you have the housing finance company, you have an equity leasing company. So there are not just one kind of uh, the non-banking financial corporation. And uh, there has been an increase in the proportion of the bank deposits. So they give you uh, some data, which is from 1985 to 86, this proportion was 0.8%. While in, in just six years and just few years after liberalization, it went to 9.5%. So what has been said is that uh, this is mainly due to the higher interest rates which uh, are given on, 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 the, on these deposits. So high interest rates. This increase is particularly because of high interest rates, high rate of interest offered. <clears throat> on these deposits, right? And the NBFCs, they have also been plagued by certain kind of financial irregularities also. And uh, in case of their irregularities, maybe because uh, uh, they were not properly regulated. So earlier authors, uh, they tell that uh, uh, most of the regulation was uh, as far as the deposit, I mean, they were confined to the deposit taking uh, activities of the non-banking financial corporation, but then uh, more ambit of the regulation was given to the RBI. And, uh, but the problem also comes in case of the NBFCs is that there are multiplicity of regulators. How? They give an example. They said this, that the uh, Chit funds are also NBFCs. They are governed by the states. Uh, mutual benefit companies are also NBFCs. They are governed by Ministry of Corporate Affairs. Uh, 
housing finance companies they are governed by national housing bank so because of multiplicity of regulators also it becomes difficult for them to function that is also true and then um, but there has been some cleaning up in nbfc sector also uh, since 1998 uh, uh, all and presently also most of the nbcs who are taking up deposit they are also subject to the prudential norms you remember the prudential norms which we talked about in the beginning of the class for example in case of uh, the banking sector uh, your capital adequacy norms or or uh, how do you have to show up your balance sheet right or the reporting requirements so those are prudential regulations so although there are many kinds of nbfcs which are existing and many of them are not coming under the ambit of the rbi regulations also some of them are with the state governments and uh, there has been some amount of irregularity sometimes although the amount of the irregularity has gone down but some kind of uh, irregularity has also been seen so some kind of scandals also have been seen at the level of a uh, few nbfcs so one of them is the sharda uh, scam which sharda chit fund scam i guess it, uh, it 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 came about in 2013 so these uh, are the few points about the nbfc so you have done the entire thing you've done the financials within the financial sector you talked about banking how banking has developed over the time you talked about how the capital market has developed bond market equity market pensions life insurance nbfcs and external accounts so you will have to give this entire picture uh, so in case if the question comes just on uh, i mean what is your take on the reforms which were taken up in the financial sector so you will have to tell everything in that question so you'll have to tell that what are the different parts of the indian uh, financial sector tell everything about it or they might also ask you about one particular point so for example they might ask you about the reforms taken up in the in the bond the debt market or reforms taken up in the insurance sector how insurance sector has progressed so those things try to understand what kind of question they can ask and only answer that in uh, in the paper and read the reading carefully make these notes and try to add on your own things in uh, in the notes right thank you beta i hope you liked it thank you